Well, I knew nothing about her. I had never heard of her until I went to the um, a dinosaur museum in Dorchester with my son, who was very small at the time. And there was a display about her in one corner, and I was fascinated immediately by this idea of her being a working class woman who made all these amazing scientific discoveries and kind of held her own amongst all these middle class men who had been Oxbridge educated. And she had had no education, no formal education at all. She's pretty well known in the local area. Lyme Regis and the Jurassic Coast, people know about her and knew about her. Through Tracy's book, you know, Remarkable Creatures and things like that, she's becoming more well known um, to more people. Um, but you know, for a long time, you know, it was really only a local thing you know, that people didn't know outside of this area, really, uh, quite how important she was. I suppose it's surprising that um, she is not more widely known, but after all, she didn't publish anything directly. Um, and so the names that you see on labels, and indeed on articles about these ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs and so on, uh, have no cause to mention uh, Mary because they're concerned with the uh, anatomy of the, of the things she found. But uh, as in interest in the history of, of the development of paleontology, which of course developed here and for which she was a key figure, as that grows, she becomes better known. She found complete specimens of uh, two big things and one smaller thing. The first was uh, the ichthyosaur second was a plesiosaur, and the third was a pterodactyl. Now these are all uh, marine reptiles or dinosaurs that we know of now, but they were completely new then. She worked out what coprolites are. Now coprolites are basically uh, dinosaur poo. I don't know any other way to say it than that, but she worked out they were these odd looking things they used to call bezoars, and, um, and she worked out there were little tiny scales in them, and she just thought, ah, Somebody has been eating this and then pooing it out, and um, so she 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 had a she had a brain on her. She wasn't just good at finding things on the beach. She was also ticking over what could this be? How does this work? How does this fit in? There has been a, a great increase in the history in interest in the history of science, um, and it is after all something that this country ought to be very proud about, um, because this is the birthplace of paleontology pretty well. The revelation that there were these enormous monsters in the seas of many hundreds of years ago, millions of years ago, uh, that is a very considerable revelation that astounded people um, uh, in, in, in scientific circles. And it's not easy to find out details of her life. Um, she's not, uh, she didn't leave a lot of letters. Uh, there are some uh, in which she quite uh, explicitly sorts out some of these chaps who thought they knew what they were talking about, <laughs> and she explains what the fossils really are. And her perception of what they are is truly remarkable. Uh, they used to send her scientific articles they had written, and after she had been out on the beach all day looking for fossils in her studio, cleaning them up, um, at night she would sit down and copy these uh, long articles about whatever, you know, about geological stuff, about ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, the stuff that they had written based on what she had discovered. Paleontology in those days uh, was in its infancy. Um, and so there weren't anything uh, much written f f to base your deductions on. It was Mary's good sense of anatomy and how bodies worked uh, and what uh, teeth and vertebrae and um, uh, ribs, what they meant and what they implied, that she uh, enabled her to make these uh, very clear analyses of what these animals were. I think Mary Anning had two strikes against her. She was a woman and she was working class. So um, as a woman, nobody expected women to, um, to take part in the great scientific revolution. Um, the Geological Society, which was very influential in London, um, didn't allow women uh, members. So that cut her out of it. So, and, and her second strike is she was working class, so she never went to school. There was no chance of her, either working class or woman, to go to Oxford or Cambridge and actually study the science to the level she probably could have and should have done. So um, always it was going to be, she was the hunter, she was the finder, the collector, who would then hand them on to the men who were going to actually study them.
she was breaking the mold. She you know, breaking out of the box and then just doing things that that she shouldn't have been doing. You know, at that that time really. So yes, yeah, so absolutely brilliant and amazing woman. She left an imprint on the world of science, which is in uh, is becoming clearer and clearer, um, and the credit to her become more and more obvious.